ouve, nos vê. To you all for hearing us and watching us, we would like to announce that today we are beginning a new series called Word Life and Edification. This is a tutorial of this daily food. This word, Word Life and Edification, is based on the Gospel of John. Today we're beginning Book 1, entitled, Do Not Waste Your Time. And we will be seeing week one entitled A Vision of God. First, on Monday, we see about believing in God's Word a hundred percent. And then later on, we will be seeing three servants of God used as channels to flow this prophetic Word, okay? which is Peter, Paul, and John. First off, we want to point out the importance of the prophetic word, because the prophetic word, if you believe on it, this word does the work. Let us first read Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13. Spada. E se sentireis dar graças a Deus, e que tem... Here we read, For this reason we also thank God without ceasing, because when you received the word of God, which you heard from us, you welcomed it not as a word of man, but as it is in truth the word of God, which, is, which also effectively works in you who believe. This prophetic word, it is of God, the source of the prophetic word is God, but God uses man as this channel, the servants of God, to come to us. And also, in the Gospel of John, chapter 14, verse 10, just would like to go over that quickly. Here's more eloquent. Here we read, Do you not believe that I am on the Father, and the Father in me, the words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does the works. So, the Word of God that does the works. It's not by our capacity, by our own ability, but it is totally on God to do His work. But for God to do His work, we need to believe on the Word a hundred percent. So, we see here, we have to believe on the Word a hundred percent, then the Word will do the work. Yet, if we have a little bit of unbelief in the Word, even if it's one percent, then saints, Satan will raise questions, especially one percent, to qu cause those questions in us. That was the example of Eve in the Garden of Eden. Satan just asked her a question that stirred up her mind. She, from then on, she began to have a conversation with Satan. So, Satan, uh, this is a heads up for us. We can by no means not to believe in the prophetic word, and but we have to believe in the word 100%. We cannot leave behind not even 1% of unbelief. We have to be simple for that. For the prophetic word, we have to believe, to obey it, to be simple and obedient. That's it. In Matthew 18.3, Lord tells us, if we do not convert, we are not converted as a little child, then we will not be able to enter in the kingdom of heaven. So how important it is to be simple. When saying this, we want to point out the importance of the teens. They are boys and girls with no concept. They are obedient. Whatever you say, they will do it. That's what we must be like them, to be simple. And today, the Lord is forming an army, holy army, according to Psalms 110, verse 3. 
And this holy army was given as a gift of the Father to the Son. We see the, the phrase holy ornaments, meaning holy ornaments is for honor that the Father gave to the Son. These holy ornaments, what are those? Are the, the young ones, the this, this holy young ones. Praise the Lord. And also, we have house of teens. And the teens are very dynamic. They go out on the streets, inviting other teenagers to, to attend their meeting. This is quite positive, and we are seeing those who are going out to the streets, and they bring 23 teens, others bring 12, so on and so forth. This is quite needed in our days. We believe that they are those army of holy ones given to the Son in the end times to inherit the kingdom. Now let us get to the ministry of Peter first. Peter, after the Lord's ascension, then Peter was the first apostle to be used by the Lord as a mouth of the Lord, as a servant who speaks the word of the Lord. We know that before that, Peter was called by the Lord at the sea, in the Sea of the Galilee. He was fishing with his brother, his brother Andrew, and when the Lord Jesus passed by there, he said, follow me, and they immediately left their nets, and they followed the Lord. So that was quite strong, right? Uh, their conversion to the Lord. So Peter, as the other disciples, they are 12 in total. He had living experience with the Lord. He knew the Lord quite well. And the Lord said to Peter, you will be fisher of man. From then on, you will no longer be a fisher of fish. Or you will be a fisherman, and that, that, that's what happened. And when the Lord was crucified, and he rose up, when he came back to earth, the Lord appeared and disappeared. So, then his presence was in his word. When he spoke, and he was present, right? So, in the Gospel of Luke, you see an example of the two disciples in the, on the way to Emmaus. They could not explain what, but the presence of the Lord was burning in their hearts. When the Lord spoke to them, this word was burning in their hearts. So, then they realized that that was the Lord's presence, even though not physically, not in a visible way, but the Lord was there. So today, the Lord's presence today, where's the Lord's presence? It is in His Word. Every time the Lord speaks, He's present with us. So then, you see that uh, Peter, on the day of the Pentecost, after that multitude coming from different nations to for the feast in Jerusalem, many of them were afraid with fear, and also others were slandering. So Peter then stood up, and the Bible tells us that Peter stood up plus the eleven. So imagine who had the initiative of speaking to the people to represent the channel of God was Peter. So the other eleven followed Peter in that. So through the ministry of Peter, the Lord opened the door of salvation to the Jews on that day of the Pentecost. But in Acts chapter 10, see that Peter also was the one who opened the door of salvation to the Gentiles as well, in the house of Cornelius. So you can see that in the body of Christ, there is no Jew, Greek, 
Gentiles, we are all just one body. From then on, then, the Lord gained a body. This body represents the church of the Lord here on this earth. Praise God. And then we know that Peter had certain difficulties because he had much knowledge, much baggage from Judaism, so it is difficult for him to understand because there, before going to the house of Cornelius, and the Lord gave him a vision there on the, uh, the roof terrace, and uh, and he saw all, uh, many of those four-footed animals, and the Lord said, uh, kill it and eat it. And he said, no, I never ate unclean animals, ever. So Peter had many difficulties. Was uh, the religious, the Jewish religion was really ingrained in him and the, the religion of Moses. And once when Peter went to the house of Cornelius, when he returned, the Jews questioned him, why did you go to the house of the Gentiles? You are not allowed to do that. So then you see that in another occasion in Antioch, Peter was with the Gentiles. All of a sudden, the ones from Jerusalem came, the Jews from Jerusalem came. Peter disguised and left the Gentiles and joined the Jews. And P Paul, at that same time before everybody, he reproached him, calling him hypocrite. So in the body of Christ, we're there are no Jews or Greeks. We are all one in the Lord's body. That's why the Lord then raised another of his servant to be a channel to preach the gospel to the Gentiles. His servant is Paul. Paul, somebody from Judaism, and a Pharisee, he was a Jew a real Jew, but then on the way to Damascus, light shone on him, really strong light. He fell to the ground, and that voice was saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And then Paul understood he was persecuting Christians. Actually, he was persecuting Jesus himself. Then he, he was blind. He had to be taken to the someone's house because he was fully blind. And who God sent, sent to talk to Paul? Ananias. And then Ananias began to say, No, Lord, send someone else. He has this reputation of uh, going after Christians and put them into prison. But then the Lord said to him, to Ananias, in Acts chapter 9, verse 15, Go, for his a chosen vassal of mine to bear my name before Gentiles, kings, and the children of Israel. For I will show him how many things he must suffer for my name's sake. So here uh, can be translated as a chosen vassal. So Paul was chosen this vassal, this instrument to take the Lord's name, not only the name of the Lord, but also the sufferings coming from this task. Oh, uh, but then Paul went to Tarsus when the church in Antioch was raised, which was the church of the Gentiles. Then the church in Jerusalem sent Barnabas there to make sure that was a real church. And then saints at that time, Barnabas 
remembered Paul was in Tarsus. He went there, brought him to Antioch. And in Antioch, they spent a year gathering, meeting there, and serving there in Acts chapter 13. You see, the Lord said, uh, the Lord said, Now separate me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Well, this work is the work of the Holy Spirit. This work needed Barnabas and Saul for the work. So praise God, the work is of the Holy Spirit, the work is of God. And Paul, in Colossians 1.15, said that Paul was to Colossians 1.25. Here we read that to fulfill the word of God, so I praise God that without Paul, the Bible in the in the uh, New Testament would not be so fulfilled. Praise God for this vessel, Paul. Paul brought us brought us many revelations. For example, in Ephesians chapter three, he said three three how that by revelation he made known to me the mystery as I have briefly written already, by which when you read, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. Christ is a mystery. So then, for us to know the mystery of God, it's not once and for all. It is gradually. That is why the Lord will be revealing as we grow in life Christ will be revealing more of himself in his word. And this word of revelation today, we know it as the prophetic word. Praise God. So, now let us get to the ministry of John. The ministry of John he always walked with Peter, even his father, Zebedee, and his brother James. They were partners in the fishing company together with Peter and Andrew. They were partners. When the Lord called him, follow me, he was mending nets. That means he was fixing what was damaged. So then he was fixing those, mending those nets. Then he came as a channel to recover, to mend and fix those nets. Praise God. So then John was called. But now, when John took over, there were already heretical teachings that those seats who said that Jesus did not come in the flesh, denying that Jesus would come in the flesh. But, in fact, the Lord has the Word which became flesh. There's no question about it that the Docetes did not believe it. There also there was another teaching of the, the, the Gnosticism, the Gnostics. They denied the divinity of Jesus. For us, brothers and sisters, our Lord Jesus is a hundred percent God and a complete and full man, Lord Jesus. So, finally, today, we are in the ministry of John. Praise the Lord. And that is why we are enjoying quite a lot of the Gospel of John. And the Gospel of John, first off, we see in Ezekiel the picture of the four living creatures with four faces in each one of those. Face of a lion, of man, ox, and eagle. We know that an eagle refers to Matthew, speaking that the Lord is king. And Mark represents the, the 
the face of an ox representing the servant, and then man represented by Luke, and finally the eagle represented by the Gospel of John. So, here, in the Gospel of John, it, it, it brings us up to heaven in eagle's wings. In the book of Exodus 19, 4, the book of Exodus chapter 19, verse 4, he says, You have seen I did to the Egyptians, or I bore you on eagle's wings and brought you to myself. So the Gospel of John doesn't mention genealogy because Jesus is God, has no beginning or end of existence. This is marvelous, isn't it? And also in the book of Mark, we don't see genealogy for we, the Lord is depicted as a servant, as a slave. He has no importance. But today, when it, focusing on the Gospel of John, his face is represented by an eagle. Praise God. And more in the book of Revelation 4.1, there we read, After these things I looked, and behold, a door standing open in heaven. Heavens have doors opened. What are we waiting for? Let us get in. Not only that. And the first voice which I heard was like a trumpet, which I heard was like a trumpet speaking with me. So it's a strong sound. Come up here and I will show you things which must take place after this. Brothers and sisters, to have God's vision, we must go up where God is in heaven, in his throne. Can I remain here on this earth? If we remain on this earthly dimension, but looking at all things as a big things, well, if we look from above, then we have a bird's eye view, a great vision. We can see anything and understand what the Lord is doing. So, brothers and sisters, let us go up. This is the meaning of the Gospel of John, bringing us all the way up. So let us remain where God is, and we, on eagles' wings, we would not be weary. We we go out, preach the gospel, going, doing dynamic co-porting. May I pray for you? And we uh, have refer people to the care networks, welcoming centers, uh, women in connection, men in, men of prayer. We have the, the mature young ones, the mighty men of David, Godspeed young one. We also especially have the house of prayers, the house of teens, which is the house of teens, which is now uh, really growing. So God is inviting us Come up here, Lord Jesus, well, let us go up, go up in eagle's wings. Let us get in the writings of John to see things from above. Jesus is Lord.